Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we made our special ice tower, but if you recall, we have a slight issue, or I guess you couldn't call it an issue per se, but we have uh, something we want to change. And that's the fact that when our ice tower shoots, it slows down our enemy before the bullet actually hits it. And maybe that's what you want. You know, you could definitely make something work with that where you have an effect when the tower shoots. But for the ice tower, at least the way I'm envisioning it, it makes more sense for the enemy to slow down when the bullet actually collides with our enemy. So that's what we're going to do this time. If you recall at the end of the uh, last episode, I said we might go to our tower type class. And uh, where is it? Tower type. And include a projectile inside of each of these types. So cannon red would have its own projectile and blue and ice, etc, etc, etc. But I think we're going to do it differently. I spent a lot of time thinking about the best way to do this. And I think I came up with something that's going to work pretty well. So what we're going to do is something similar to our tower abstract class. For me, at least, I think it makes the most sense for us to make a projectile abstract class. Now, these four classes that we have open right here are the four that we'll need to change this episode in addition to another one that we're going to be making during this episode. But let's start in our projectile class. So unlike our tower abstract class, I think we don't need to make an entire new class. I think we've got everything we need already in here. If you look down, we got our constructor here that just takes our texture x, y width height and kind of sets it to the correct variables. It's already really similar to the way our tower abstract class works. So what I think we're going to do is save ourselves some time here. And we're just going to write abstract and turn our current projectile class into an abstract class. Now, there's some things that we'll need to change eventually to kind of make it work the way we want it to work perfectly. But luckily, we already implement entity, so we already know that we can rely on certain methods and variables to be there and to be functioning. And what we're going to do next is first fix these errors. Actually, no, we're not going to do that next. What we're going to do next is create a new class for a projectile. So just like our tower abstract class, every time we want to make a new kind of tower, we make a new class for it. We're going to do the same thing with our projectile class. So let's go to data, new, class. And I'm going to name it projectile ice ball. And just like our towers, again, this is why I chose this method of doing things. There's a lot of different ways we could have made custom projectiles and custom effects, but I feel like it's easiest if we just use the exact same method of implementing this as we do for our towers. It's easy to remember, and we'll do the same thing for our enemies as well. So projectile class ice ball extends projectile. And you can just hover over this and add a constructor, and boom, it's already there. So now, just like our tower class, we've created a new custom projectile. Of course, this does nothing unique. It just uses our basic projectile abstract methods. But what we can do is just like our tower class, our tower ice class, is we can override certain methods. Now, before we do that, we need to reorganize our projectile class a little bit. Like I said, we need to kind of get it ready to be an abstract class because we didn't create it with that in mind. And one thing we need to change is here, you can see our colliding with an enemy and doing damage is all handled instead of our update method. And we don't really want that. We want that to be a separate method that we can override. Just like in our tower class, we can override the shoot method. I think in our projectile class, we want to override the do damage method. You know, the, the method that happens when we hit an enemy. We want to be able to override that for every projectile so we can have a different effect each time. So let's go ahead and make a new method and i'm thinking of a name here we could just name it damage as long as that won't confuse you guys because we have damage the variable as well as damage in our enemy class i would just name it something that makes sense for you that is going to occur whenever our projectile collides into an enemy okay i'm going to call mine damage because that makes sense to me so public void damage and what we want to do now is copy these two lines where we set the alive variable of the bullet to false and where we actually do damage to the enemy. Just copy those and replace them with our damage method that we just made. Okay? And we're going to put those two lines right here. So hopefully that makes sense. What we're doing now, we can actually get rid of these brackets here because it's only one line for this if statement, is we're checking the collision every time we update the game. We're saying, did our projectile run into an enemy? If so, Instead of doing these two things, we're going to call this method named damage. And inside this method is where we do these two things. It's where we actually hurt the enemy and where we set the alive status of our bullet to false because our bullet actually hit the enemy, so it's, it's dead. 
And so the way or the reason we did this is because now we have this method here named damage that we can easily override in our projectile ice ball class. So let's go back over here and just type at override public void damage. And now we can do all of our custom effects in here. So for example, one, uh, we're going to get our target super dot. Oh, just like our tower, we need to make a getter for our target. So let's go back to our projectile class and make a getter, say public enemy get target, and just return our target. Now back in our projectile ice ball class, we can say super dot get target dot set speed, and we'll set it to four, four F because it's a float. And right now it's not doing any damage, but let's see if this works. Okay, so let's go and fix those errors now in the Tower Cannon class. We're just gonna change over projectile to projectile ice ball, because it's our only custom projectile in the game now. And same thing in our tower class. Change it from projectile to projectile ice ball. And now, oh, one more thing actually. In our tower ice class, we no longer want to slow down the enemy when we fire. Instead, we want to delete this here and just use the default method for now. We can change it later. Instead, we're going to slow down the enemy when the projectile actually hits it, which is what we did here in our projectile ice ball class. So let's go ahead and run this now. And keep in mind that all of our towers use this new custom projectile. So when we start the game, we'll have a blue tower, I believe. And what that will do is fire projectile. And when it hits the enemy, make sure you pay attention. When it actually hits the enemy, the enemy should slow down. So let's see. Just watch carefully. And it worked. Of course, we're not making it become unalive. We didn't do that yet. So let's go ahead and go do that right now. So in our ice ball class, we can also do the super dot set alive. Perhaps we need to make that super dot. Yeah. All right. So let's make a setter real quick in our projectile class. Public void set alive and it will take a boolean uh, just named status and we'll say alive equals status so now in our ice ball class we can say super dot set alive false so now when we hit an enemy the projectile should stop existing there we go, just like old times. Now we're not doing damage still, but I imagine you guys can figure that out on your own. Uh, I think personally, maybe the ice ball shouldn't do damage. You know, maybe it should just be a slowing mechanic. If you do want to do damage, of course, you can just use the super dot. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, use a super dot damage and that will do the alive force actually. So here we can actually get rid of this set alive and just keep it like that. Because if you recall, in our projectile class, our damage already takes care of the fact that we no longer want to be alive, as well as it hurts the enemy. So let's go ahead and run this one more time. And what we should see here is the enemies slow down when they get hit, and they also take damage, and the bullets stop existing. So this should kill an enemy, and there we go. So that was pretty easy, right? Last episode, we made a custom tower. This episode, we made a custom projectile. And now we can see how easy it is for us to just kind of make these abstract classes and extend them the way we have to make new towers and projectiles. Uh, I think what we're going to do over the next few episodes is kind of flesh that out some more, make it a little bit easier for us in the future, add some functionality to our abstract classes, and then maybe move on to enemies and start making different enemy types. Okay, well I think that's it for this time, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week on Indie Programmer. <laughs>